Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to talk about this viral TikTok video that R. Kelly sang from prison. And I want to get your point of view about it. I think that um, it's a, a signature of R. Kelly. He sings. That's what he does. But I wonder, I wonder if that's going to be a problem for him in sentencing, since this did go viral at a specific time, which is right now, the end of March, when he will be sentenced May 4th. I believe also, you know, could this have been another plan or scheme to have someone speak ill against him? See, Your Honor, he still hasn't learned. And this is what we're saying here. You know, I'm, I'm just wondering what, what your thoughts are about that. So let's listen to the video. And just, okay, R. Kelly recently chatted with an ecstatic fan on the phone. And the footage of the conversation has now gone viral. And in the video, he's just singing to someone. So let's listen to it and you tell me what you think, okay? I wanted to ask you something. Can you sing a song for me? Which one? Love Letter. Did you get my call? Did you get my call? It was pretty cool to me because I was able to hear his voice. He sounds the same. He doesn't sound like he's under some type of duress, you know. His COVID seemed to have been over. So, you know, my only fear is that will someone use this against him because, you know, some stupid thing, you know, oh, they, they did a quality test on the voice and it was a young girl or it was, you know, someone from his past or <laughs> something stupid, like to just add more time or something. It's like, he has to be so mindful of every single step he takes, you know, pretty cool, you know, if that's the case. However, I believe, and then right under it, there is, um, I'm seeing more videos and commercials of gay men, okay, surrounding things that are put up by R. Kelly. What do you think about that? Do you think that this is a new age and a new dawn that we need to get back you know, um, into that, that's just, you know, changing or should we go back to, you know, thinking about sex in a more romantic way? Um, I think this thing has gone so far out of proportion until I just don't know anymore. Um, I do know that everybody makes mistakes and I do know that there is nothing wrong with counseling. There's nothing wrong with admission of guilt to support and help yourself to heal. And that's something that I want to talk about. Um, some people say that control mechanisms of narcissism has been thrown around tremendously in our world and our society because some people feel that narcissists are just people who are controlled they know what they want. They agree that it's going to be their way or no way. And um, some people look at narcissists as a form of manipulation, a form of control that is just way um, out of the situation of a normal human being. I'm not using the definition in any way, shape or form to or for or against anyone right now. That word, that term just came up when I began to talk about relationships and traditional 
um, relationships versus the new age. So what are your views on that? I also ran into a book called Sex Me, um, an erotica book of um, confessions that were made about, you know, R. Kelly being bisexual and um, how very raw and real this book was. I wanted to take the time and do some reviews on the book. I will not be reading it. Um, the reason why I will not be reading it is because that's not my audience. This is not what I'm here to do, um, to judge his sexual lifestyle. Uh, however, I am looking to see um, how we can piece this thing together and somehow support and help our brother in this situation right here even if it's to continually give him the information that he needs to remember, you know, that some of the allegations that has been said about him, a few of them may be true, and there may be some need for psychological readjustment or healing. So, okay, so about three years ago, Goodreads did a survey of the book and this is how it was rated one girl named jordan rated it a five star she said uh this was hard to rate first of all if you're not in the mood for erotica you don't want to read this there is a lot of sex and it's blatantly descriptive i was uncomfortable reading it from her viewpoint you're reading this from a first person point of view and she's describing the things that were being done she is describing them with raw, vulgar language, and she's telling you she liked it. It sounds so unreal. If you didn't already hear the stories of the other girls R. Kelly was, has kept, you wouldn't affiliate this story with him. Even knowing he's a freak, she described her feelings while she was having these experiences and her feelings with him so well you could almost feel what she was reading, kind of like um, another book by Donald Goins. He was so good at describing um, cravings for and perspectives of addiction. You almost wanted to try something to feel it. Not that you would, obviously. You just get a first person perspective that you won't have otherwise. It was kind of the same with this. If this is true, I understand how he's able to get these girls. He's on some pimp shit for real. He's versed in mental manipulation and understands how to control a woman who's vulnerable to it with sex. I almost don't believe this shit. She's either telling the truth because a lot of what other women said he did to them, this author said was done to her, or she did her fucking research and did a damn good job. There wasn't much new revelation or confirmation except the allegation gang affiliation and sex trafficking, which is a fucking big deal. But she mostly glazed over her sexual experiences with him over the five years she was there and the things that led her to decide to leave. She drew me in. It was a good, quick, intense read. Now, mind you, this book is not available in America. So I don't know if they're trying to internationally defame him or what. But we can't purchase it here, but they can purchase it internationally. It's weird. Stephanie Cassidy said, if this is a work of fiction, someone has a creative mind. If this is actually real, people need to be arrested. Three years later and people are finally being held responsible for this. Took long enough. This book shows this man is a sick individual. I don't understand why she went back to him after all he put her through. Glad she survived because some women in abusive relationships, don't make it out. Love her courage. Br uh, Brianna, I actually did not read this book myself and didn't plan on even reading it. I watched Kaya do a st story time video on YouTube reading the book to her fans. I don't know if this is real or not due to some of the things that happened, but it was crazy. The story was very detailed and uncut. If you can handle explicit language and graphic scenes, you should read it. 
Tiffany Gaines. After reading this book, I view R. Kelly different. If this is a true story, I personally think something happened to him as a child in these behaviors or how he deals. This isn't me saying the things he does or is doing is right. It's me saying he needs some serious help. Nina, don't judge me for reading this. I found it because of Surviving R. Kelly. Without any context, this is a graphic novel detailing an extremely abusive, controlling relationship. It is a sexual explicit, simply because, simply written narrative that the author makes no apologies for, but is quite a compelling read. Um, Elaine says, hmm, the person who wrote this is clearly still in awe of him, but not. I see people saying, why are people acting like they only learned about R. Kelly on this first weekend of 2019? But I think the impact of this was the constant barrage of story after story from their mouths. Words on a page or screen don't necessarily convey the same emotion. I continue to be disturbed by all the revelations. I will say, though, that this that his enablers should also be incarcerated. And it was on the shelves of American, African-American authors, biographies, nonfiction, American. Nikki Rate said a one star. I don't know all I know for sure is that I don't like this book. A lot of events made me question the, the val validity of her stories. But if it is true, yuck. And that's not even a good description. This is a honestly very disgusting and evil Gazelle, this book is so good. I finished it in one day and it's very descriptive in a lot of parts, but overall it's super good. So these are some of the Goodreads um, reviews on the book. I'm not going to read it. I did get a glance at maybe 10 pages, but if you dare to 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 step into that world, the erotica world, from another person's point of view, from a woman's point of view that, you know, is just talking about what happened to her and her historical events with Robert Sylvester Kelly, then um, let me know. Leave some comments in this comment box below about what your views are about the book. Maybe we can talk about it. But again, my goal is to share as much information that I feel involves the determination of appeal status from the historical actions and activities of R. Kelly's life. And I believe that they're going to use, if they're going to allow people to come on national TV and share a story that they have no type of evidence about, it's just talking and like, I'm going to give a testimony on TV and call it entertainment, then I'm sure that this part of what these women are saying in their books are going to be very connected to the belief system of what the government feels about this defendant. So there is no way that he was able to get a fair trial. Um, I do feel for this gentleman because not only because he's R. Kelly or Robert Sylvester Kelly, but because he could be any of us. And this court system is truthfully scaring me at this point in time, especially for our young black men. Okay. We have gotten smarter. We've gotten stronger mentally. So there are certain things that can't be hidden from us anymore. However, there are things that I feel should be looked at and we need to do our research on this technology-based uh, system because words can be used as evidence now, it seems. So I wanted to get your opinion about this. I don't really have much to report. I'm just sitting here waiting on research, uh, doing my research on the, um, the government's um, the government's draft on what they're going to do and the sentencing May 4th. That's what I'm looking at. 
So I thank you for listening to this podcast and viewing it and commenting, sharing, subscribing. And I would love to hear your comments about this. And if there's anything that you think we need to talk about on this channel, put it in the comment box below so we can keep communication going. Um, how many have decided that they're not really sure about whether he didn't do this? How many people are still saying he's 100% not guilty? I'm sure not 100%.